Since the beginning of the full-scale invasion, the title of Game Changer has been handed out like hors d'oeuvres at a banquet, by us here at United24, by others, by everyone basically. And still, after all these predictions, the game seems to be the same. The war in Ukraine, sadly, continues. But, in fact, without all these new modern weapons, the situation we are in now could, no, would most definitely be very different and not in a good way. The game, at least if it was in any way in the beginning dictated by Russia, has in fact changed quite a bit. And there is maybe no piece of equipment that best stands as an example for this change than the HIMARS. Welcome to Talking Tactics, where this week, on the one side, we would like to pay tribute to a true game changer, regardless of the overuse of the word. And secondly, we want to take a quick look at the attack on surface-to-surface -surface missiles for the HIMARS that Ukraine has been asking for since the beginning of the invasion. The name couldn't be more American, but their use for Ukraine stands without question. So, let's get right to it. HIMARS, which stands for High Mobility Artillery Rocket System, is used by various militaries around the world and is produced by the US American company Lockheed Martin. It's highly mobile and, depending on the ammunition used, can deliver precision-guided rockets to targets at large distances. The exact number of HIMARS currently in service in Ukraine is not really publicly available, but according to sources like the New York Times, there are at least 20 in operation. The first HIMARS were delivered to Ukraine in summer 2022 by the US and their effect was felt almost immediately. Firstly, their mobility allows for rapid deployment and relocation, making them difficult to target. They also have a long range, enabling Ukrainian forces to strike targets deep within enemy territory, such as warehouses, depots, but also barracks and supply lines. Additionally, the satellite precision-guided rockets carried by HIMARS offer enhanced accuracy, minimizing collateral damage and improving overall effectiveness. The first rockets received by Ukraine have a range of over 90 kilometers. HIMARS have been used in countless locations along the front line in Ukraine. Most specific attacks involving the system are not readily available in the public domain due to the sensitive nature of ongoing military operations. But there are some examples that show just how effective this weapon is. For example, on New Year's Day 2023, according to the Russian Defense Ministry, 63 service members died in an attack on a building housing Russian soldiers in the region of Donetsk. Officials on both sides said it was carried out by HIMARS. Another example is the strike on Antonivsky Bridge, which connects the city of Kherson to the left river bank in summer of 2022. At that point, the city was still under Russian occupation. The bridge was one of the key supply lines. In 2023, Ukraine received new ammunition for the HIMARS, so-called ground-launched small diameter bombs. With a range of around 150 kilometers, this once again boosted Ukrainian capabilities. The HIMARS have achieved cult status in Ukraine. The system is basically a part of pop culture. You can find it on stickers, caps, t-shirts, memes. The video of a totally relaxed dude on a bicycle riding past the HIMARS launching rockets towards the Russians has become a symbol of how much trust the people seem to have in this weapon. However, while Ukraine is very grateful and the positive effects of the HIMARS are unquestionable, there still is one request that hasn't yet been granted. The ATACMS, or Army Tactical Missile System, a type of surface-to-surface -surface missile system designed to engage and destroy targets at ranges of around 300 kilometers, potentially doubling Ukraine's range with the HIMARS. According to the New York Times, the Biden administration is quietly debating whether to send ATACMS missiles to Ukraine. Now, while filming this episode, the ATACMS were not yet greenlit. But regardless, there was and still is a lot of discussion about which is better, ATACMS or the Storm Shadow, and that because the latter has a lot of advantages, the ATACMS aren't that needed in Ukraine. It's a bit of a silly discussion to be honest, because in the best case, Ukraine is able to use both systems. Without any disregard for the Storm Shadow, which has helped Ukraine a lot, the ATACMS have a slightly longer range, since the export version of the Storm Shadow has a reduced potential strike range of only around 250 kilometers. The HIMARS also possess a higher level of flexibility for both conventional and non-conventional warfare scenarios because they are ground-launched. It's not that a plane isn't much faster and much more maneuverable than a truck, but if you think about it, every time you want to launch a Storm Shadow, you need to spare an airplane. That is connected to a lot of different issues. You need more manpower, you need more maintenance, and it's a lot more expensive. But the main argument is that Ukraine's highly diminished air force requires every plane it has for the countless other necessary tasks at hand, like shooting down Russian drones and flying combat sorties in support of the troops on the front line in battle. The delivery of the attackums would consequentially relieve the air force somewhat, which potentially can save many lives. So, to recap, and regardless whether you're on Team Attackums or Team Storm Shadow, the inclusion of Attackums in Ukraine's arsenal would enhance its ability to deter potential adversaries and respond effectively to numerous threats. 
So why the long wait? The hesitation of the United States in sending attack camps to Ukraine stems from the same underlying factor that always dominates this discussion. What reaction will this provoke from Russia if the US supplies a weapon that will offer the Ukrainian armed forces some pretty powerful capabilities to attack targets on Russian soil? And while of course it's understandable for such a superpower like the USA to look at the political implications and potential impact on regional or even global stability and to factor that into taking a more cautious approach, sending weapons maybe not all at once but piece by piece, it is of course a little hard to explain to the men and women dying in this war. Also, according to numerous reports, the HIMARS in Ukraine have been manipulated to make them incapable of shooting attackers. Rumors are that the US did this to stop third parties sending attackers without their permission as Attackham's variants are in service with the armies of the UAE, Bahrain, Greece, Poland, Qatar, Romania, South Korea and Turkey. It's not clear, at least for now, if and how exactly they were manipulated and how reversible these changes are. What do you think? Maybe you know more? Are the Attackhams a viable or maybe even necessary asset for Ukraine? Anyway, we hope you enjoyed our episode. Hit like and subscribe and see you next week.